Okay, for today's video, we're going to talk about two-point statistics or two-point spatial correlations. Now, to my knowledge, this was developed by David Fullwood, uh, Stephen Yazgoda, and Surya Kaladindi. David's at BYU, Yazgoda's at OSU, I think, and Surya's at Georgia Tech. Uh, a terrific tool. They have a great library. I don't know who made it, but one of them made it. I think it was Surya. Uh, this Py MKS, Python sort of materials knowledge systems, MKS. It's fantastic. It has a number of different modules and tools, one of them for two-point spatial correlations. And they have a tutorial, which I'm going to be working through in the next slides, which I think is pretty useful. OK, so I took this tutorial straight from the PyMKS documentation, where they have an example of it. We're just going to kind of walk through it and see how it works. Um, so feel free to check it out there if you would prefer. But I've added a couple lines of code to make this generalizable to any image, because they have a sort of built-in image, the checkerboard that you see there. I'm going to show you how you can generalize it to anything with just a couple lines of code, in case that's confusing for anybody. OK, so first off, what are two-point spatial correlations, sometimes called two-point statistics? So I already showed you this, that you know, in, in class we said that you know, if you've got two different phases present and you draw a vector, what's the probability of if it starts on phase one that it ends on phase one as opposed to phase two? Right? That's essentially the idea behind two-point statistics. And then you change that vector's length and its direction, and you explore all the space around each one to figure out how are things correlated with one another spatially, right? Hence, spatial correlations, right? Using two points. That's that's the idea behind this, okay? So to do this, you do have to have um, Pi MKS installed. So you can look at how to install that. I can't remember if it's a pip install. It was an easy one to install, though. But you go ahead and you run it. Uh, you'll notice that they're bringing in NumPy. They're bringing sklearn.pipeline. They're grabbing Pi MKS. Uh, specifically from PyMKS, they're grabbing Generate Checkerboard, Plot Microstructures, Primitive Transformer, and Two Point Correlation. Those are the specific modules that we're using from there. Okay, They're going to do a few things to make sure that we can plot things in line. Nothing fancy happening just yet. And here's they get started. They say, OK, <clears throat> the object that they're calling X data, X underscore data, they're going to do Generate Checkerboard Module. And then they're going to say how big the checkerboard is. Well, it's going to be size 21 times 8. 21 times 8. So the shape is going to be a 21 by 21 uh, dot persist. Okay. So what they're doing here is it looks like there's eight squares, but each one of these squares is made up of smaller pixels. That's that's essentially what they're doing here. I think 21, I assume, is what that means. Um, okay. Now they're going to plot this microstructure by sending the first layer of that object. And you see that the first layer, because it's a 1 by 168, 168. Yeah, 21 by 21 there. Um, that's what they're plotting is that first layer here. So sure enough plots and it's the checkerboard that we think they've got this nice heat map that shows you uh, in this generate checkerboard method it must automatically assign values of 0 and 1 to alternating checkerboards so that that function if you will already exists for us and it creates this shape okay then uh, I have this section here where if you want to run it with some sort of other image other than this sort of built-in checkerboard we'll be able to but let's skip this cell for now let's not run it just yet Instead, let's come down here to the point where we're going to compute periodic two-point statistics. So periodic means that there's something that is periodic. It's repeating. And certainly in a checkerboard, there is something that's repeating, right? So maybe that makes sense here. But it says compute the periodic two-point statistics stats using the two-point correlation class. The periodic boundary argument is going to be set to true because it's periodic, right? And then to compute two points to uh, stats, we first discretize the microstructure using a chosen basis using the primitive transformer with n state equal to two. Basically, they're going to say that's saying that there's two different faces as opposed to something else, right? Because there is. There's basically zeros and ones. Okay. The primitive transformer and the two point correlation are combined into a scikit-learn pipeline to generate a model. The transform method executes the pipeline as this is not a model that requires a predict step, right? There's no prediction happening. We're just going to do a correlation, OK? So it says model equals pipeline steps. They're saying discretize it with two, right? Zero and one. That's basically saying that's the two phases, values of zero and values of one. Those are our two different phases, if you will. And then the correlations do two-point correlation with periodic boundary conditions. And look for 0 to 0, meaning phase 0 connected to phase 0, the first phase, the first phase. And then phase 1 connected to phase 1. Remember in Python, we count from 0, right? And then give me the correlations from 1 to the other phase, right? So they're looking for those three different correlations. Two are self-correlations, and the other one is a cross-correlation between the two phases, OK? It's going to print the shape, and then xstats um, print the shape of that, OK? So, so far, so good. 
that's going to get us ready to actually now do this. And then you can actually plot it. Now that they've done that, you can actually plot the microstructure of the stats of it uh, compared to itself. So phase zero, as it is correlated to phase zero, we can plot phase zero correlated to phase one. Uh, sorry, one to one. So let's go ahead and plot both of those. And here we go. Here you've got phase zero as it correlates with phase zero. And here phase one as it correlates to phase one. So just think of up here in this top corner, right, in our checkerboard, right? This thing, if we're looking for where it correlates with its own phase, it correlates on itself, obviously, but also on the next phase over, but not right here. That's the alternating phase, okay? And so that's what you're seeing. You're seeing essentially the checkerboard form here. It's forming the checkerboard because that's what, that's what the correlation is here, okay? But we can also ask it to do uh, correlations to the other phase as well, right? So this is zero to zero, this is one to one, this is zero to one, and it alternates, it flips it, right? Because now you're looking at correlations between black, well, blue and yellow here from zeros and one. That's the correlation that we're looking for now, right? So this is a pretty cool tool. It's looking like it's generating the correlations that you would expect to see for a checkerboard, pretty straightforward, right? Um, some of the things that are nice that it'll do is it will actually calculate the volume fraction of the different phases, right? They have some built-in tools for doing that, which is kind of nice. And this can also be done with non-periodic structures, right? So the checkerboard is periodic, but you could do it with something that was non-periodic. So we'll go ahead and run it. In this case, it's gonna look pretty similar because it's just the same thing, right? We have a periodic structure, so this shouldn't change much. Uh, doesn't change at all, right? It looks the same because we had a periodic structure. So turning off that periodic boundary condition made no difference, right? And again, you can figure out the volume fraction of different phases. On the checkerboard, it's 50-50, as it ought to be. So this was maybe not too interesting because it's just a checkerboard. So what else could we do with this? Well, let's come back up to here. Instead of running it with a checkerboard, let's load some custom images. So I have a couple of custom images in here. First off is this one. If you remember from our structural feature uh, featureization, slides, we showed this one. They showed what this one looks like. Maybe this is like, I know that uh, block copolymers often will co -seg they'll segregate into different regions, different phases like this. And you can see that there is sort of like a, a region, a distance upon which they sort of separate and then are correlated with one another. So can we capture that? Well, sure. This file is named custom.jpg. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab from PIL import image, right? So I am, the object is now going to be image.open. We're going to tell it where to find that. Here's where it is on my computer. I'm just pointing to that file, right? I'm going, I'm pointing to, let's do the first one, not custom three. We'll just do custom.jpg. Um, I'm going to create a NumPy array, right? We're going to turn that, that data in that image. We're going to turn it into a NumPy array, right? We're going to threshold it. If this was a, if this, I mean, this one was already a black and white image, but if you had something that was in grayscale, you would need to threshold it. Um, if you're not familiar with thresholding, that's basically saying instead of a value between 0 and 255, you can pick a cutoff value and everything below goes to 0, everything above goes to 255, right? That's essentially what this function is doing, a lambda function there for, for Python, if you're not familiar with those. It's uh, given the threshold, it's sending it either to white or black is what it's doing, okay? Right? Um, yeah, basically, and then we just change the dimension size to match what they're expecting it to mean. It needs to be a 1 by you know, whatever, whatever. And so we're adding a dimension, we're expanding the dimension. Otherwise, this is basically the same. So we run this and it's going to grab it. And in the end, it should have the right dimensions. Ah, it can't find it. So I changed the folder name. So I need to tell exactly where the folder is located. I think I moved it. So let's come over here and let's grab this new direction. And I'm gonna update this uh, path so that we grab the right one. And let's try that again. Okay, so the original image was a 280 by a 280, but then we expand it and now it's a 1 by 280, 280, so that we'll be able to do the, the rest of the steps with this, with the exact same block of code. And when we run it, we have to do the whole pipeline step where again, it says what phases are what based off of, you know, telling it that there's two phases present and that it's periodic boundary conditions. Um, <clears throat> and then we can go ahead and plot the correlations with itself of the two phases and with the other phase. And here's what you see. With the, the black to the black, this is the correlation, right? 
in all these different directions and distances, you can see how it correlates. You can see that periodicity. If you've looked at sort of pair distribution functions, it's kind of the same idea. You're looking at what is the relationship as it moves further outward in different directions, right? The spatial correlation. In phase one to phase one, it's the exact opposite, right? By definition. And then from zero to one, you can see that one as well, which is pretty slick, okay? And again, just like before, it has method, methods for figuring out the volume fractions in different phases. And you could do it with um, non-periodic conditions, right? Here they're going to do it with non-periodic, the same sort of approach, because this structure that we showed you is not periodic, right? It's non-periodic. So let's see how that changes things when we plot it. It should look a little bit different than we saw before. When you turn on non-periodic conditions, yeah, it's slightly different. It takes into account the actual shape as opposed to making it perfectly periodic. You can see the differences there. If you spend some time looking at them, they are a little bit different, okay? Um, and then same thing going down to the volume fraction and all that jazz. This one's 62% black, 37% white, and so forth, right? And you can do it with different shapes. Like here's some of the other shapes I've provided. This one, this one, and that one. What do you think will be the correlation um, of this shape? Think about where does white correlate with white? Where does black correlate with black? Where does white correlate with black? What should it look like? And should it be periodic or non-periodic? Let's take a look at it and run it. So that's custom one. Let's come back up here, plug it in. We're going to change instead of just custom JPEG, we're going to do custom JPEG, custom one.jpg. Come down here, we run it. This is under periodic conditions. We're going to run it. That was the autocorrelation, and now with the other phase, and sure enough, there you see it, right? Phase one, where does it correlate with another? It correlates the most and the least as shown here. So it correlates the least right there. Well, think what our image looked like. Right in the middle, all of these shapes, depending on wherever you pick your point from, it's most likely to not correlate with black and right in this direction from the center point moving outward because they're all sort of that same shape. So that's not going to be correlated. But if it goes the other direction, it's going to be much more correlated, right? So you can sort of see that happening here, which is pretty slick. And again, that was with um, uh, with periodic periodicity turned on. If you turn it off, you get slightly different shapes here. You can see what it would look like. Here's the autocorrelation, and then correlation with the other phase, right? And you can see it all there, okay? Same thing, you could do it with these other structures. Let's go to this uh, JPEG uh, 3, or custom, custom 3 JPEG and try running it. I think you get the point now, though. Um, and these files are available if you want to play around with them and figure out what yours would look like. But it's slick because you can have lots of different images, but you could collect the spatial correlations on all of them, and that could be your feature vector. Or you could do it one by one if you want, right? This is a really cool way of generating that data. Again, check this one out here. It's, you can see the periodicity showing up. It's adding this periodicity for this last one. The last one looked like this, by the way. It had these ups and downs. Now let's turn off that periodicity. Come down here and see what it would look like if we do our correlations. And there you see it. So a powerful tool, I think, for featurizing uh, microscopy data and microstructures, I think. OK, our next video will be on molecular strings and fingerprints. It'll be another worked example of how do you make representations, how do you featurize some of these organic molecules, and what libraries are available for that.